Hello, happy people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the fourth novel in the Chronicles of Narnia series published in 1953 by C.S. Lewis, The Silver Chair. It was the fourth one published. It's the sixth one uh, by Chronology. Um, and so my copy of it um, is a more recent copy and it's, it's supposed to be number six by read, but I'm reading chronologically. I'm sorry, I'm reading it in the order of publication rather than chronologically, uh, which is the way that they tell you to read it. But I think it's more organic uh, to read things in the order in which it's published. And so we'll be taking a look at the Silver Chair today. Um, it was published in 1953. It's the first, uh, it might seem like it would have been uh, published well after, this is the fourth book in the series published, uh, well after C.S. Lewis started getting his publications um, and his first uh, short novel in it, which was a big hit, but he had sold his second book, uh, Prince Caspian, prior to publishing uh, to Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe, and he's already written uh, the, th for the third book, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, uh, before it was published. So he had already done three books in the series. It was almost halfway done uh, before The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was published, and it was a big hit. Um, so the guy only had a, a few more you know, uh, books in them, and then he called it. Uh, so this is the first novel, then, in the seven-book series that was written after the publication of the first one. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, it is an interesting novel. Basically, what, what winds up happening in this novel is that one of the key characters uh, who came across uh, the world uh, from the kids uh, from the previous world named, named, named Eustace. He's back again. It's been less than a year uh, in the real world. He's back in Narnia, but decades have passed in Narnia because Narnia time moves to a different pace than world time. Um, so uh, it looks like it's 1943. Uh, C.S. Lewis has published a timeline. It says that both uh, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader and um, Silver Chair both happened in the same year in real Earth time. So uh, this has been happening uh, again in decades have passed and one of the uh, Prince Caspian who was introduced in the second novel at, uh, with his name uh, is a boy uh, who was fleeing and uh, the, Pev the four Pevensey children uh, are there uh, to get him to his place and to help him uh, and secure his kingship. A few years later in the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, he's now a young man, and uh, he is now leading, he's been king for three years, and he's now leading an expedition uh, to the uh, east uh, to find uh, his people that, that were sent out uh, to their deaths by his predecessor, uh, the previous king, uh, who was trying to kill them. Um, for that journey, two of the Pevensey children are still young enough, and they go with him, and as well as, well as Eustace, who's not a nice person. Anyway, Eustace comes back, he's changed. Um, and in the first chapter of The Silver Chair, um, he sets out uh, on another adventure. He seeks it again. Uh, with, he's trying to flee from some bullies. He's changed, and they don't like it. He's also protecting people that he previously bullied. Um, and again, he, that makes him a target of bullying. So one of their targets, uh, a, small, a girl named Jill, and himself both uh, ask Aslan for help. And they get transported to Narnia, to Aslan's land, uh, a high, uh, high, high uh, mountainous uh, place that doesn't have snow, but instead has lots and lots of greenery and grass and birds and that sort of thing. But way up in the mountains, like it's super hot. Uh, like really high up in that land. And they arrive there and then they'll journey to Narnia from there and begin their adventures. Um, it's about 250 pages long. Took me about a little less than five hours. We knock it out probably more like four and a half or something like that. Maybe four, four 45. I gave it about an hour a day. Knocked it out about 50 pages a day. Sometimes I'd come in less than, than an hour. More like 50 or 45. So it, it wasn't five hours. Though I did not get out in the course of five days. Now, uh, if you've been watching my other C.S. Lewis reviews, uh, you'll you'll know that this is my first time reading of the series. Although I'm very familiar with it because it was read to me when I was a kid. 
so I'm familiar with it. And obviously, there's a lot of spin-offs. There's some spin-offs of this over here, too. Uh, there's a, a BBC miniseries and some other stuff uh, for the penultimate uh, story. I'm in, in the collection chronologically. Um, and the middle story in the collection, uh, based on its uh, publication date. Uh, there is one thing that happens in this that I do want to talk about. Um, there is a world uh, that, our, that our main characters adventure in for about maybe half of the novel. It might, might be a little bit less, it might be 40 or 45% of the novel. Um, and that world is called Underland. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about this and mention it um, is because it reminds me of the Underdark in, um, uh, in, in Dungeons and & Dragons that was created sort of by Gary Gygax. And what Underland is... Uh, is, is, is that, you know, C.S. Lewis supposes that under uh, the world there are a large series of tunnels and caves and caverns that interconnect naturally uh, and have enough space for people to live. And that there are cities and a giant sea called the Sunless Sea, which takes a long time to cross, and different people that live down there and an evil witch who controls... Um, uh, the Shadowlands. Uh, there's also the land of Belm, uh, which is which is ruled by uh, the gnomes. Um, so the there are a number of of worlds. There are uh, kingdoms, if you will, uh, big cities, um, fake lights that aren't uh, natural, like lanterns uh, that wouldn't, you know, uh, get the people that, that are upset that don't don't do that, that don't give off, you know, uh, uh, warm warmth, uh, and uh, in these big giant cities, big giant seas, a big giant inter interconnecting section of stuff. And that sounds a lot to like, like Gary Gygax's uh, The Underdark to me. Um, where you have evil races like the Trowel, um, surf uh, uh, gnomes, uh, evil dwarves, uh, nastier stuff too, seas, um, underwater bridges, underwater canals, underwater uh, chambers that are big and huge and then also tiny and small and this big giant interconnecting lattice that you have to know the area in order to, to kind of get through and even sell your stuff probably get lost uh, and this idea of the underdark reminds me of the underland uh, and so I wonder if this is what is this if this is where uh, he got the inspiration uh, for the Ender Jerks, given their similar names, even have similar names, they're both Unders, with one, with one word after that, and Land and Dark are pretty similar. And they both have an A, they're both one, four, three, three, three consonants, one vowel, uh, the vowel is an A, it's the second letter, right, and they both start with Under, um, so you can see why uh, one might have led to the other. Uh, in uh, Gary Gygax's first uh, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, I'm sorry, rather Adventures and Dragons rule book um, for uh, his Dungeon Masters, he has an appendix called M, where he lists uh, the influences of of his thing. Um, and I don't remember like a line that says the or, or something else later on. It says the Underdark came from this or came from that. Uh, but he's very open with what his influences were, where he got stuff from, who. You should go to for inspiration um, and read and that sort of thing. Um, and so I wonder if this book, The Silver Chairs Underland, uh, inspired uh, our sort of modern view of the Underdark and modern fantasy from it. So I just wanted to note those connections because they are very similar uh, to each other in a lot, in a lot of key ways, uh, both from a big picture angle uh, and also from some details. Uh, uh, levels too. Um, there are obviously some exceptions, uh, but not many. <laughs> uh, we start to do some serious uh, deep dives into the two. But there you go. Um, what do you think? Uh, have you read The Silver Chair? And are you also familiar with The Underdark? Or do you think uh, that Kirgara Gex might have? Do you see the similarities I am? Uh, do you disagree with it? Um, I'd be happy to engage you with that further in the comments below. Uh, I do think that this novel is a good solid uh, 7 out of 10. Um, it's well written. It's well done. Uh, C.S. Lewis was getting to the point where his writing is pretty solid uh, and so forth. So I do think it's a 7 out of 10 uh, as the fourth work in the series. Uh, his prose is getting a little bit better. His can be a little hard to go back to in the first couple of novels. In the line in which the wardrobe um, isn't exactly the 
the best wordsmith in the world, like a J.K. Rowling or J.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, uh, or even Ursula K. Le Guin's uh, RPC series, all of which were meant for underage people. Um, but this one, so he's not the best wordsmith of the big, of the big ones that are known, uh, but he's fine, he's good, he's readable, um, and I'm enjoying going back to him and reviewing it. So what do you think of it? Uh, have you read it? Uh, did you agree or disagree with my take on the connections between the inner land and the inner dark? Um, uh, did you did you see some of those connections? Uh, uh, do you think that that's where it came from? Uh, our modern sort of fantasies uh, underworld um, uh, take is very similar to C.S. Lewis's Underland. Uh, did you like the novel? Did you disagree with it? Would you like to talk about some of the spoilers uh, below? If so, I would be more than happy to engage you with it further. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? Because there's going to be a lot more uh, to follow. Um, and then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it in watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled to be different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an awesome day.